Okay, friends, I think we're going to get started just because we have a couple things that we're going to be doing today. Um, if you're still eating, no worries. Um, you can finish up. Um, but as Father Steve mentioned, we are getting down to the wire with confirmation, which is very exciting because we're going to be celebrating the sacrament very soon. And um, one of the really most important steps that you guys have left to get to confirmation is that it is very, very, very highly recommended, required in my opinion, highly, highly recommended that everybody receives the sacrament of reconciliation um, between now and the actual date of confirmation. To make that a lot easier, if you are able to come to our next session, which you all should be able to, um, we are all going to be celebrating it together. So it'll be very easy. You just come like normal, and we'll make sure you receive the sacrament, and then you'll be all set. Um, so in preparation for that, um, today I will be speaking just a little bit more about reconciliation. I know we talked about it when we did our seven sacrament review back at the beginning of the year, um, but this is going to be a little bit more practical as to why do we go to reconciliation? Why do we go before we receive other sacraments? Um, what does it actually look like to go to reconciliation? Um, because I know if you're anything like me, I didn't go to the sacrament of reconciliation between my first communion and my confirmation. Um, and that was, for me, that was five years. So it might be, you might be in the same boat. You might have received it once or twice since then. Um, but no matter what, we'll make sure everybody is very well prepared. Um, it will be very simple um, and we will reduce as much anxiety as possible. Oh my gosh, there's a bug. Okay, <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> so let's begin. We're going to review really quickly um, what the Sacrament of Reconciliation is. You might have heard it called confession, going to confession. You might have heard it called um, penance um, or going to receive your penance. Um, but no matter what name it's called, um, it's a sacrament in which the priest, working as an agent of God, forgives our sins. So when we go to reconciliation, we tell the priest our sins, we confess our sins, we say we are truly sorry, we are truly sorry, and we are willing to do penance or to make it right. Um, so the, thought of the priest will give us um, some kind of prayer or some kind of action that we can do to help um, strengthen us spiritually, help strengthen us so we don't um, make those sins again. Um, yeah, and just receive God's grace. Um, if you're, again, if you're anything like me, you might have thought of reconciliation at some point in your life as um, a burden, something annoying, something I don't want to do, something that's awkward. Um, a lot of people feel that way, um, but I promise you it doesn't have to be that way. Um, you might have even, yeah, you might have specifically said, I wish I didn't have to go to confession or I wish I didn't have to talk to the priest specifically. But when we do go to reconciliation, um, we realize that it is a sacrament that is full of so much love and a sacrament that we would not want to go without because it's an opportunity for us to receive the grace of God. Um, so we're going to talk about all of the stuff that reconciliation does for us, um, the good stuff. So um, when we, we know that sin is when we um, willingly make the decision to go against what God uh, wants for us. Um, that might, you know, look like maybe I lied to a teacher or to a friend, or maybe I was talking to someone about someone behind their back. Things that we know um, is not what God wants for us, is not the way that we can express um, love for others and love of self. So when we commit sins, um, we are turning away from God. So if you imagine your relationship with Jesus or your relationship with God as a conversation, um, and you are standing in front of someone having a conversation, when we commit sins, we're turning away from God. We're literally turning our back to that, and we can't have um, a conversation or a relationship if we are not actually present um, and looking God in the eye and being able to speak to him directly. Um, so when we sin, it's like we turn, we're like, we're turning away from God. Our souls are becoming farther from God. The sacrament of reconciliation, on the other hand, reunites our souls with God. It's us turning back to God. I love this picture um, of the, from the story of the prodigal son when the prodigal son returns and he runs into the father's arms and the, his father forgives him and wraps him in a big hug. That's exactly what happens when we go to confirmation. I mean, excuse me, reconciliation. We are returning to our father who is God and he's wrapping us in a big hug because he's so excited that we're back. Um, so when we um, restore this, our relationship with God through the sacrament of reconciliation, our sins are forgiven. They're completely washed away. Just as darkness disappears immediately when a light switch is turned on and the lights come on, so too does 
um, sin disappear from our lives once we go to reconciliation and receive that absolution or receive that forgiveness from God through the priest. So as we talked about a few times ago, sacraments are signs that Jesus gave us to give us grace, to give us the strength to live holier lives. Reconciliation is an amazing example of how God's grace is given to us. We're able to turn away from sin. We're able to do good um, instead of uh, to commit further sin. So that's what reconciliation does for us. So something, um, what we call this grace that we receive is called sacramental grace. It fortifies us, it strengthens us against committing sins again. I think I like to think of reconciliation, um, doing that penance that the priest tells you at the end, whether it be say a few prayers, maybe apologize to somebody that we've hurt. That is medicine that strengthens our soul. It strengthens us and heals us. Um, so that is why someone um, who really wants to live a good life, who wants to be a person of faith, will make it a practice to receive reconciliation often. It's a sacrament that we can receive as often as we like. Um, a lot of people I know go monthly. Some people go um, every three months. It's totally a personal decision, um, however, however often you feel um, that you would like to be in a state of grace again. Um, but we also, you might have remembered, we go to the sacrament of reconciliation often before we receive other sacraments. So you guys all received your first Holy Communion. I don't, you might not remember, but before you received your first Holy Communion, you had to receive your first penance or you had to go to your first reconciliation. Um, that's not a coincidence that we, we do those sacraments in that order so close together. Um, it's because to go to, um, to be able to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, ooh, excuse me guys, to actually receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we want to be in a state of grace. Um, we want to be we want to be in complete right relationship with God. So that's why we go to reconciliation. Um, this is the same kind of situation as that. We are going to go to reconciliation in preparation for confirmation. So when you stand before the bishop and you receive um, the sacrament and the grace of confirmation, you are going to be in right relationship um, with God. Um, a lot of people also like to. Um, receive reconciliation at different times of the year, such as um, during Lent in preparation for Easter, um, because Easter is a very important um, holy day for us. Um, to receive during uh, Lent is a good preparation for your heart for Easter. Um, same goes for Advent and Christmas. So now that we've reviewed, let us take um, a look at the actual right of reconciliation or what actually happens? What's this, what does everybody say and do during reconciliation? So um, if your mentor hasn't already, could the mentors please pass out the right of reconciliation and the examination of conscience sheets that are in your folders? Thank you. So I think one of the biggest um, anxiety maybe producing parts of um, reconciliation, well, I think there's two parts. I think the first is that maybe we don't know what's going to happen when we go talk to the priest. And the second might be, I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to say <laughs> to the priest, which are both totally valid. Um, and we're going to go over both. So we're going to start with the um, right of reconciliation, which is the one page handout that you guys have. So let's just go through um, what that page says. Um, very quickly, and you can follow along on that handout. So first, when you sit down with the priest in the confessional or sitting across from the priest in a chair, you're going to make the sign of the cross with the priest and say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been fill in the blank how long since my last confession, and these are my sins. And the priest is never going to judge you. It doesn't matter how long it's been since your last um, reconciliation. It doesn't matter. They're just excited that you're there. So you can say, Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It has been two years. It has been three months. It's been six days. It doesn't matter. Um, so, But be honest, because um, the priest that you're sitting across from is working as an agent of God. Um, you're really speaking to God through that priest. So after you say that opening statement, you tell the priest your sins. Um, just like you were told when you received your first reconciliation, this is not necessarily a laundry list of every single bad thing that you've ever done in your entire life. You don't need to rack your brain or be afraid that you forget. Try to look, we'll talk about making an examination of conscience in a minute. That's how we um, try to discern or to figure out which sins um, that we should confess to the priest or what, um, you know, what is most important to bring up in confession. The biggest things we're gonna be looking for are patterns of sin or places that we see, oh, 
I do a couple of these things. That's all because maybe I'm insecure about myself or I'm jealous of others. That would be like kind of the like the overview of all of these maybe more specific examples. But you're also welcome to um, confess specific um, times in your life that maybe you've fallen short. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So you'll tell the priest your sins. Um, it doesn't need to take very long. Sometimes it's only a couple sentences. The priest will then offer a little bit of guidance or um, assistance. He'll give you a little bit of spiritual advice. Sometimes maybe he'll quote scripture. That might be more of a conversation. That might be um, the priest talking at you a little bit, but try to listen because what he's saying, um, he is inspired by the grace of God as well. So after the priest talks to you, maybe gives you a little bit of advice um, or maybe asks you a follow-up question, the priest will give you a penance, which is the prayer or action um, that we will do after we leave confession um, as our sign of being truly sorry for our sins. So when you were small, it was probably uh, maybe one Hail Mary and two Our Fathers. You might still get... Um, a penance like that, you might also get pray a decade of the rosary or um, look up this passage in the Bible and pray with it. Uh, or again, it might be like apologize to somebody, um, try to help your mom this week with something, um, something like that to help. Again, that is the spiritual medicine that's going to strengthen us um, and help us be stronger against sin going forward. And then after um, the priest gives you your penance, he'll say, please make your act of contrition. There's a prayer that um, I'm sure most of you guys memorized um, when you were small. It's called the Act of Contrition. Um, it starts with, my God, I'm sorry for my sins. You're welcome to always bring that prayer or this whole sheet with you when you go to reconciliation. It's not like you have to memorize necessarily anything. Also, small secret, when you make your Act of Contrition, it can be anything. It doesn't have to be that prayer specifically. There are other Acts of Contrition. You could also just say, dear God, I'm very sorry, amen. That counts. <laughs> but this one is a beautiful um, is a beautiful act of contrition to have on hand. And there's a reason that we teach it to our, um, to our second graders when they go to first reconciliation, because it's just a beautiful way of saying uh, you're sorry to God and you intend to do better going forward. Let's see. Then the priest will offer a prayer of absolution. Absolution is actually forgiven of those sins. Your soul is completely wiped clean. Um, he'll hold his hand over you to bless you. You can bow your head. Um, at the end, he'll say, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you can bless yourself. And then you're done. So you can leave the confessional or wherever you're speaking to the priest, and you have to go then immediately do, uh, say the prayers that the priest told you to do, or as soon as you possibly can um, perform that penance that the priest told you to do. And that's it. It really doesn't take very long. It's like way less than five minutes. It usually ends up being like two or three minutes, really. Um, but just knowing what's going to happen, I think, helps a lot. Um, in going in to actually speak with the, pri the priest. So that's awesome. If second graders can do it, you guys can. <laughs> yeah, we just, Jonathan and I saw it, what, 10 second graders received their first reconciliation yesterday morning right here. And it was, first of all, adorable because they're small. Um, but second of all, they were very well behaved, very confident. Most of them were like, I want to go next. I want to go next. So um, again, you have done it before. I know you can do it again. Um, and I promise you'll feel better afterwards. I always do. So. Let's talk about how we can prepare um, to um, go to confession. Again, just to make us feel a lot better. We have a much more fruitful um, discussion with the priest. Um, and yeah, we can truly confess our sins, um, the, like what's actually on our hearts. So to make a good confession, it's important that we reflect on our sins. It's called an examination of conscience. It makes sense. We're examining or we're looking at our conscience what our brain and our heart has told us is right and wrong and the decisions that we've made um, in the past, however many months or years that it's been. Um, we take this time to recall the ways that God has loved us and where we have fallen short. So God has given us so much out of love. He's given us the Bible, like we've talked about. He's given us um, the mass, the other sacraments. Um, and in response to that love, we are called um, to love God in return. So when we sin, that's where we've fallen short. So there's a lot of different examinations of consciences, I guess, um, <laughs> it would be the plural. You can look them up online. There's tons um, of different prayers. You can say a lot of them are just like guiding questions, like 
have I done this? Have I forgotten to do this? Um, and that's kind of what the one that I've given you guys is like. Um, but this one's great. It's the little um, two-page handout that you guys have, the examination of conscience. This one's awesome because it actually goes through the Ten Commandments. Um, and it helps you, it asks specific questions. So instead of just like the one, like it's the fourth commandment is honor your father and mother, instead of just thinking about that, because it's like, I don't know, do I honor, <laughs> like what does honoring mean? The questions are like, have I been helpful? Have I rolled my eyes at my mom? Or have I ignored the recommendation of my parents? Um, those questions are help you dive deeper into those 10 commandments and what they actually mean for us, first of all, at your age and in our world today. Because um, yeah, some of them are, it's like, you will love the Lord your God. OK, what does that actually mean? For you guys, it means going to mass. It means saying your prayers. Um, you know, It means preparing for confirmation. Um, so we can go through that list slowly, pr prayerfully, um, in conversation with God. Um, if there's a place that you see on that, um, as you're going through that, that you feel like you're falling short, it's like, oh, geez, I'm really not doing that. That's something that you can bring up in reconciliation. You can say, Father, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm doing my best, but I don't make it to Mass every Sunday. Um, and that's, you know, that is one thing you can say in confession, and the priest will have um, some advice for you, or some spiritual um, strengthening advice for you. Um, so between now and our next session, which isn't until the end of the month, so you guys have a little bit of time, I invite you to use this examination of conscience um, to and bring that to prayer to begin to reflect on your sins. So when we meet next time, like I said, we will go to reconciliation right at the beginning of our session. So you might have a little bit of time while we're here to look it over again. Um, to maybe I, I sometimes I jot down notes and then just throw the paper out afterwards. Um, but if once we make our examination of contents, I promise you'll feel a lot more confident um, and comfortable going to reconciliation and talking to the priest. So I highly, highly recommend that everybody takes. It might take five minutes. It doesn't take that long um, to do that. So does anybody have any questions off the top of their head about reconciliation? All right. So we're going to take just a few minutes at our tables now to reflect on these um, questions. You can journal and then share at your table. The first one is, when was the last time I received the Sacrament of Reconciliation? And what do I remember from that experience? Was I seven years old? Was it last year? Um, and how do I feel about, how do I feel in anticipation of going to receive the sacrament next session um, or at some point between now and confirmation? And what do I need to do to prepare for that? for that moment when I'm going to be sitting with the priest. So we'll just take, you know, a little bit more than five minutes maybe just to journal and then to share what you're comfortable sharing at your table. Thank you, guys. Oh, gosh, guys. I, I have it together. Trust me. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Okay. So, hello. Hi. You've heard this presentation a million times by now. Um, but I promise this is the last time you guys ever have to hear this presentation from me. So that's a plus because once you're done here, you know, we're done with youth faith formation, but that also doesn't mean that you stop coming to church or anything like that. You just transition to adult and a regular par parishioner um, and can do all sorts of things and everything like that. So we're going to remind, I'm going to start a reminder of our annual safe environment presentation. And, um, and why do we do this? We do this because we want to, you know, we have a duty as a church community, just like how your schools have a duty to you as your school community and your families have a duty to you as your, their fam as your, your parents and grandparents that we want to make sure that everybody is safe. Um, and, and so this is us doing our part to ensure that you are, you know, that we know that you are safe and that you are, you know your worth and you know, you know more about yourself and you know what is, what is good for you and what's not good for you. And that kind of ties into, um, you know, we're talking about the Sacrament of Reconciliation as well. And it, so it kind of all ties in together. So we know in the Bible, you know, one of the many tools that um, we have in our spiritual toolbox that we read in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, that God created us in his image, right? And that God saw this as a very good thing, right? That we were created by God, right? That's a great, that's a good thing. It's a great thing that we're created by God. Um, and because that, that tells us that because we know that God is love, that, hey, we're, we're, we're created to be loved, and we're created to love, and to um, dwell on that love, and to really receive love into our lives. So we're meant 
because of that sense that we are created by God's love, um, we're meant to respect ourselves and everybody else as persons created by God. So the Catholic Church teaches that God has created each one of us as unique and special. Each one of you is unique. You have your own gifts, your own talents, your own things. You're not, uh, there's no identical twins here, no. So even identical twins, you know, you, even though they might look the same, they're different, unique people. Um, and because of this, um, because of that we're unique, special, created God's image, um, we're meant to respect ourselves and everybody else as persons created by God. And so each one of us moves into what we call a circle of grace. And that's why I pulled up this image. I've seen this? You guys have seen this image before, right? Yeah, just nod your head. Yes, Jonathan, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, you've seen this image. I know that. Um, but let me refresh you on kind of what this image represents. So you have the blue. And the blue represents the world that we live in. Right? So we're, we live in the world. And then you have the person. What do you think the person is? God? No. Us. Me. You. Everybody here. The person represents us. And the yellow circle that surrounds that person is God's grace or God's love. Um, so we're always surrounded by God's love. And then you have the image of the dove, which is an image of the Holy, God's Holy Spirit. Um, and then you see the words, red, or the words circle of grace are in red. Again, reminds us of the Holy Spirit. So you have, here we are living in the world and we're surrounded by God's love and God's love comes to us from the Holy Spirit. Um, so God is always with us, right? We know that God is here with us right now. Just, and not just because we're in church, but we believe that God is here because we just know that God is always with us. So we, that's part of our faith, that we know that God is present with us wherever we go. Um, and he's present with us when we're happy and when we're sad. And he is always with us in our good times, the bad times, every, every single which way. And God wants us to make sure that we are loved and that we feel safe. And that if we're feeling hurt, scared, confused, unsafe, that he wants us to not feel that way. He wants to help us. He wants to be there for us. And, and he does that in, in a bunch of different ways, which we'll get into. So that's why we have our faith that we, we know this is what we believe. We believe that God is here with us, that God is present with us, and that even if we might be struggling with something, we might be feeling something negative in our lives, that we just trust that God is going to be there with us and is going to help uh, provide us guidance and comfort in our times of need. Um, and so God also helps us to understand what belongs inside the circle of grace, what, what belongs in the thing that helps us connect us to him. So he knows that he helps us learn that loving things, right? Things that are good for us, like forming healthy relationships with people or having, you know, taking good care of our bodies. That's good for our circle of grace. And then obviously things, it, God helps us to discern what's not good for our circle of grace. So, you know, we talked about, you know, things that negatively affect us, um, especially as you guys get older into high school, um, you know, peer pressure type things and, um, or sorts of like bad, unhealthy relationships and unhealthy practices that we might be doing. Um, so that's what God is there for us. God through the Holy Spirit again. We're talking through the Holy Spirit. That helps us to kind of know that, kind of form that kind of conscience. And uh, Julia talked about an examination of conscience. And that's, what, that's a great tool to help us understand what belongs or what doesn't belong in our circle of grace. So if we're, we're thinking about, hey, what are some good things in our lives? We use that examination of conscience to say, hey, what's going good? What's... What is keeping me alive? What is keeping me fulfilled? What, what is nourishing my soul? And then what are the things that is not nourishing my soul? What are things that are hurting my relationship with God, hurting my circle of grace? Um, and there's things over time too that we grow, we get older, our lives change. We, you know, we feel better about things and we don't or, you know, our, our feelings towards things change forever. Um, so, like, for example, when, you're a when you were probably, like, six, seven years old, you might have had, like, an endearing family nickname that people gave you, or, you know, people would come up to you and give you a big hug, or you go up to people and give them a big hug. But now as you get older, you're probably like, hmm, that's not something I really kind of care for, and that's okay. Um, that's you understanding kind of what your boundaries are and how you feel. And so you're kind of knowing 
as you get older, kind of what you want to positively influence you and what's something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, and again, the Holy Spirit helps us to kind of understand that as well. So going back, if you guys remember two weeks ago, Father Steve talked to us about um, kind of forming our consciences and thinking about the world that we live in today. And he gave that, he showed you guys that video of that great talk by that actor who plays Jesus on that TV series. And he was talking about the world that we live in today. Um, and he was talking about how there's a lot of different things that go against the values that we hold. And Father Steve kind of talked about that with you as well. And so often we hear about things in our society that just really are negative impacts on us. So that's, you know, we could talk about the respect, you know, that respect for life discussion or people placing on value on things that are, that turn them away from God, such as people placing value on money or technology or unhealthy relationships. That's, that all kind of negatively impacts us. And if, especially if we kind of let that influence us, I guess that's a good way of saying that. It's like, if we let that kind of take a hold of us and we say, you know, we kind of let those negative things kind of form us as who we are that's that kind of pushes us away from god and kind of corrupts that circle of grace that we're talking about so we talk about you know father steve talked about this respect for life and you know one of the other things that you guys you know my experience in school is um subject of like bullying you know some of you might be subjugated to that or know somebody who has you know been bullied in their lives and stuff and you know those are like when things like that happen to us that negatively affects us and it unfortunately changes our viewpoints in the world and makes us you know things like that kind of helps makes us lose hope lose hope in our in ourselves lose hope in in our faith in god and you know it things like that kind of go against what goes against what god calls us to do and so it's important for us to kind of understand that to recognize that to Think about things in our life, you know, those negative in, uh, pressures and impacts in our lives and how they, you know, how, how they affect us. Because things, things in life do affect us um, in different ways, like I said. So, you know, when if somebody's like bullying you, that's going to negatively impact you. So what do you do in that case? What do you do if you are in that moment of like, I don't know what to do. This, this, is, this is happening to me. Something is really negative, like negatively affecting me, and I'm losing hope. I don't know where to turn. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk to, what have you. Um, and so one of the ways, this is an acronym. I, I'm not going to type it out, but think of the, ac the word plan, P-L-A-N. Throw in another A in it, so it's like plan, like plan. So plan, two A's. Um, so... This is what you can do. So the P stands for protecting with respect. So knowing it's understanding that you have a circle of grace and that maintaining that circle of grace. So understanding what is good and what is fruitful for you in your lives and understanding what is going to help uplift you and support you and what's going to make you feel good about yourself and what is going to bring you closer to God and bring you into healthy uh, relationships with people. The L in plan stands for listening. So in every situation, we remember that the Holy Spirit is always with us and there to keep us safe. And the Holy Spirit gives us feelings or instincts sometimes that we need to listen to them. And so, and again, that's why the examination of conscience is good. It's so you can listen to the Holy Spirit. You can think about what's going on in your life. You can think about those things that are going to, you know, that are affecting you in one way or the other. It's, it's, it's about listening. It's about being quiet and being attuned to what, what is God trying to tell you in this moment? And then the first A stands for ask. So when you have an uncomfortable feeling, it means that the whole, you're not recognizing the Holy Spirit helping you. Um, you know that something is not right. So the letter A asks for, does this say yes to what God, God has called me to be? Does this belong in my circle of grace? Am I in a situation where I am being uplifted? I am feeling loved. I am feeling good about myself. Or if I, am I in a situation or am I doing something that is turning me away from God, that is corrupting that circle of grace? 
Um, so it's ask yourself questions. And again, going back to the examination of conscience, it's a great thing. You know, we're, we're reminded to ask ourselves questions whenever uh, we just don't feel right about ourselves. And it's, yeah, it's particularly important to, to ask ourselves these questions when we're in unsafe situations. So say you're in a situation with negative influence friends, or you're in a situation, an even worse situation, where you are a victim of some sort of abuse or something like that. And you may not realize it at first, but you might have that funny feeling of like, hey, something's not right here. Ask yourself questions. Ask yourself like, hey, what is... Am I feeling loved here? Am I being respected by whoever I'm with? Is, is, this, being, is this a respectful relationship? Is this a loving relationship? Um, or do you feel comfortable in sharing things with whoever you're with? Or do you feel like, no, nah, I don't got this great feeling? And you got, if you have any sort of kind of like negative feeling in your gut, trust your feeling because that's the Holy Spirit talking. So you got the P stands for again. Protecting with respect, understanding your upper circle of grace. L, listening to the Holy Spirit, listening to what God has to say. A, asking questions to God, praying to God, right? Asking yourself questions like, hey, is, is this good? Is this healthy or is this not? The next A stands for act. So you've kind of come to this. So say you come to this realization like, hey, I'm not in a great situation. I'm not in a great place. Either I'm in this really terrible relationship with this person or, you know, God forbid, I'm, you know, hey, this person is really kind of abusing me or doing something really bad to me, or, hey, I'm not doing something great for other people. I'm not doing the best loving thing for other people. So what do you do? You act on it. So you, do, you act in a way that's going to protect your circle of grace. And the way you do that is by telling people that you trust, adults that you trust, um, that are there to help you. So... You can, so I should say this, there's a letter A for act, and then there's the little letter N for notify. So act and notify kind of go together. So notify and the trusted adults, um, the people, aside from your parents that you can go to that, who are going to do the right thing, who, if you tell them, hey, this is what's going on, they're going to do the right thing. And then you can also, you know, act in ways like getting away from situations that might make you feel comfortable saying things as simple as saying no or walking away or just you know if you are the one acting on negative situations if you're the one that kind of perpetrating negative situations so say you know say you're at school and you know you're really kind of teasing somebody or you're making fun of somebody and stuff and you realize hey maybe this isn't a good thing well then remove yourself from that situation you know kind of stand up for yourself and be like look this is not right this is or the people that you know, push back against the people that you're with and say, hey, look, this is really not cool. This is not the good thing. So when we do those things, when we understand that we have a circle of grace, when we listen to God and we ask ourselves questions and we then act to notify people about this, that really kind of is going to help us. It's going to help preserve our circle of grace. It's going to help connect us closer to God. It's going to really kind of uplift us. And don't we all want to feel good about ourselves? I do. I hope you guys feel the same way if you feel that you're good about yourself. Um, and, and at the end of the day, that's, that's the most important thing is that we feel good about ourselves, we feel happy about ourselves, we feel safe about ourselves, right? And the way we do that, again, is by recognizing, again, circle of grace, and recognizing that we can do something about it. And then we can talk to people about it too. So, you know, besides, so I want you guys to do the last couple seconds, you know, in your journals, why don't you guys write down two people no three people do three people three people besides your parents besides your parents three people in your life that you can go talk to for whatever whatever it may be that you can trust to confide in that you know and make sure they're adults because you can always talk to your friends of course and stuff like that but you know you guys are all going through the same thing because you know you're all the same age and stuff but really adults in your life that you can go to who who can do something Say you're in a tough situation and you don't know how to get yourself out of it. Who, a trusted adult who can help you in that situation, who can reaffirm your circle of grace, who can uplift you and 
you know, God forbid, again, you're in a tough, you know, really bad situation, they can get you the help that you need. Or if you're going down a path that you don't feel comfortable going, they can kind of guide you in the right direction. Sound good? All right, why don't you guys do that? A couple minutes and then we'll finish up and get out of here. Welcome. All right, friends, we're just going to do a couple, um, well, I have a few announcements, um, but thank you so much for your attention while I was presenting on reconciliation, while Jonathan was presenting on our safe environment um, presentation for this week. Um, so like I keep saying, we are getting very close to the um, end of our program to actually receiving the Sacrament of Confirmation, which I'm so excited about. I hope you guys are excited about too. Um, so here's some reminders, some important stuff we all got to do together um, before uh, we get to that day of um, actually receiving the sacrament. Um, number one thing is everybody needs to turn in their saint name forms and their sponsor forms. Um, if you haven't turned them in at this point, they are late. If they are much later, we might not be able to celebrate confirmation with you this year, which we don't want to happen. Um, but those are very serious requirements that we have to have in order um, for you to receive confirmation with us. So thank you so much to everybody who has turned them in. If you have them, if you brought them with you today, make sure you give it to your mentor to put in the folder or to give to me directly. Um, that will be great. Um, and if there's any issues, you can always contact me, contact Jonathan, contact Father Steve with those. So again, thank you so much. Um, this, I love reading the saint name paragraphs. They're so awesome. And I learned a lot of new stuff about saints too, which is really exciting. So thank you again for those. Um, I have hard copies of those if anybody else still, if anybody still needs them. Um, again, as I always say, we need to continue to do our mass journals every Sunday. I also have hard copies of those. Um, you get an email every week to fill them out. Five minutes. It's a really great way to continue to be thinking about your faith, to be praying, um, to be connected to God, to really get a little bit more out of going to mass every week. Um, yeah, just that, just that little extra um, five minutes really, I promise you, helps um, in terms of your preparation for confirmation. So thank you to everybody who's been doing those consistently. Um, small thing, if you didn't get your height measured for your robe, I think, Avery, you came in late. If anyone else came in late or didn't get measured, make sure you see me before you leave to just take your height real quick, just so you have the right size robe so you're not tripping over it. I would hate for that to happen to anybody on the day of. Um, so that'll be really quick. Um, we have two of these sessions left like this, where we're gathered together like this. So February 26th, we're gonna have our a regular confirmation session like this one, we're gonna go to mass. Uh, we'll come downstairs and then we're gonna go to reconciliation, like I keep saying. Um, that'll be at the beginning and then uh, we'll be doing something else for the rest of our time together. Um, so February 26th, that's our next session. Our last session like this is on March 12th. This one's very important for a couple reasons. Number one, everybody has to go to the 11 a.m. mass here on um, March 12th. If you're not able to, for some reason, you have to tell me ahead of time um, because it's going to be a really special mass. So I don't know if you guys, if you guys were at mass um, upstairs this morning, one of the um, intentions for the prayers of the faithful was for those second graders that I told you um, are receiving their first reconciliation. Um, just like that was an opportunity for the whole parish, for everybody who's gathered together to pray together for those um, students who are receiving that sacrament. We want to do that same thing for you guys, but in a kind of a bigger scale. We're going to have a special blessing for you guys and for um, your sponsors or your, or your mentors, um, whoever can be there. Um, Father Steve will call everybody forward. It'll be very simple. He'll offer a blessing. But that's just going to be a really awesome opportunity for the whole parish to be aware. Oh, yeah, there's all these students who are receiving confirmation. Uh, because we are a parish family, we're all going to pray for each other. So just know that um, that's going to be a really exciting time because um, everybody's going to be praying for you in a very special way. It's also going to be a really good opportunity for us um, to, yeah, be at that Mass together. So everybody's going to um, come to that March 12th, 11 a.m. Mass right upstairs right before our session. We will have a session like, like this after um, that special Mass on March 12th. Father Steve is going to be talking about the actual, um, what's going to happen on the day of confirmation in terms of what is the bishop, why is the bishop going to be there? What is the bishop going to do? Why am I wearing a red robe? Um, We'll go into details a little bit later about in terms of like logistically, like where am I going to sit? Where am I, when am I going to stand up? Who's going to be um, walking with me during the confirmation? But Father Steve is going to give us some really important information about spiritually, like, yeah, what is happening um, when the bishop is there? What is happening when um, you are anointed with oil, um, when your uh, sponsor presents you using your saint name instead of your real name? So that's a really, really important session, absolutely required. Um, so I'm excited for that one because Father Steve does a really good job. Then, so that's March 12th, 
March 14th, two days later, is our confirmation rehearsal. Um, 6.30 p.m. here at St. Anthony's. Everybody's going to be there. It's going to be awesome. It'll be a party. Um, we inv- <laughs> that, yeah, that is a non-negotiable. <laughs> that is a... Yeah, it's true. If yeah, if unless like someone is you know gravely <laughs> ill, <laughs> yep, everyone's gonna be there. And your sponsor ideally would be there as well. If your sponsor's out of town, not able to make it, um, a parent or other adult can stand in for them. But that's a very again just extremely important time. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll all be there that day. It'll be a, it'll be a fun time. Um, Father Steve gets very excited. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that'll be, that'll be the time when we all figure out, okay, this is exactly where I'm sitting. This is exactly what I have to do. Stand up at this point, walk around at this point. Um, it'll, it'll make the day of a lot go very smooth, a lot simpler. Um, and then, yeah, March 19th, 2 p.m., confirmation mass here. Um, you guys are going to arrive by 1.15 at the latest. Um, you'll have your robes. We'll make sure everybody knows what they need to bring and what they need to have and where they need to be. Um, all of this information, I will be sending so many emails about it. I will be handing out um, handouts at our next session with all of this information on it, um, particularly that stuff as we get super close in terms of the rehearsal and then the day of. Um, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Uh, again, like since we're getting down to the wire, everything is becoming very, very, very important. So I really appreciate you guys paying attention, um, behaving yourselves, and being here is awesome. I really appreciate when you guys are all here. Um, okay, so if anybody needs to see me before they leave, please do, especially for the height, um, for your height measurement, for any forms that are outstanding, if you have any questions. Um, and I'll send you on your way, but we're going to close in prayer. So let's pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for this time together today. Thank you for blessing us as we continue this preparation um, on our journey towards confirmation. Please be with us this week as we go forth into the world um, to go to school, to practice our sports, to rehearse, to use our talents for your glory. Um, We make all these prayers through your most loving mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, guys.